Well, Linda and I are still camped in the uh, snowy mountains in Montana, central Montana. And uh, it's a nice, warm, beautiful day. And we're just going to take a hike up the mountain here and see what we can find, just for fun. Yeah, shorty. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you were wondering why she was so tall. <laughs> I grew. Overnight, I grew. <laughs> Okay, Linda, you lead the way. I'll bring up the rear. Well, here's a something. Oh. It's a, somebody's um, arrow with a broadhead on it. It's an older one. Wow, bet you this one has a story to tell. <laughs> Whoa, what you got there? How many? One, two, three, four, five. A five by five. And that is a white tail. Super deal. Hey, wait, let me, uh, let me get... Next to some oak poop. Let me see that. It's been here a while because the mice and squirrels have chewed off. Yeah, that's going to make some nice knife handles, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a beauty. That was a nice white tail buck. Hey, let's look for the other side. Yeah, because usually when they lose oh, one. Is. No, you're kidding me. <laughs> Are you kidding? Is it a... Oh, Linda. It's a matching sign. Gosh, that's fantastic. And I didn't even use a metal detector. <laughs> You just eyeballed them, didn't you? Yeah. Nugget nugget to be proud of you. Super deal. Well, Linda found that pair of white tail sheds yesterday, and uh, it's unusual to find a pair, but she did. And today we're kind of keeping our eyes open for elk shed because not very many people come up here, so they're, they're, there's a good chance. Well, there's a ravine down below us here, and... Uh, Judging by the tracks we've seen, the animals follow that ravine, so we're going to kind of do the same thing. There's a trail through here. That's an animal trail. Let's, yeah. let's go ahead and follow it. Without going through these pokey stuff. Okay. There's. I'm down with that. Pokey stuff over here, but not right. as thick. Couldn't ask for a nicer day. I mean, it is beautiful. <laughs> and with all the flowers in full bloom and everything, the sound of the wind in the trees. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really nice, folks. Really nice here. It's uh, fairly easy to walk through the woods here, which I really like, because as a teenager and a young man, I grew up in Washington State on the west side of the Cascade Mountains, and uh, you can't walk through the forest at all there. It's so overgrown. Uh, literally, you just don't walk through the forest. But here, at least you, at least you can. This is awfully nice. I wish I could explain to you how wonderful it smells, but it's warm, very warm, probably 85 degrees, and um, you can smell the pines and it smells really, really nice. Well, people come to the woods for all kinds of different reasons, and our reason is just to enjoy the peace. Yeah, I've, we've had our days of bringing the four-wheeler along, or me riding dirt bikes through the woods when I was younger, but uh, now we just like to get out here and just enjoy the peace and listen to what we can hear and watch the clouds go by. What cloud shape did you just see? <laughs> It must be hungry because it looked like shrimp, which reminded <laughs> me that we haven't had shrimp in a long time. I'm not big on shrimp, but I eat it. <laughs> hey, you know what we got waiting for us when we go back? Linda made the cheesecake in the Instapot, and I'm anxious to see how it turned out. Right now it's in the refrigerator setting. So I'm going to let her tell you how she made that when we get back there. And I'll sample it and tell you how she did. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll have to see, because I didn't bring any measuring things with me. So what was it, by guessing, by golly? Yeah. Ah, oh, 
Well, that would be interesting. <laughs> it should be. One time, Linda and I were anchored off of Lahaina, Maui, on our sailboat. And I was laying on the foredeck, and the lights of Lahaina were off my left side. I was laying down, and the boat was, of course, rocking and bobbing. And I was looking up at the sky, and I had this expanse of sky from, you know, 180 degrees and some moonlight on the, um, on the mountains behind Lahaina. So uh, it just, that's when I first realized how small I was. <laughs> it was so big. And since then, since that evening, I've had this um, passion or this desire to be in wide open spaces. I, I just liked it. I liked the feeling of it. Well, that's not where we are now. No, we're closed in here, but it sure smells nice. Yeah. Hey, Rick, come see. What do you got over there? <laughs> something interesting? <laughs> something. Something. Oh, the scat? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's a meat eater because it's got, it's got fur in it. That it, could be coyote. Right next oh, to Oh, that's a pile. That's mountain lion. Yeah. So that could be a uh, mountain lion. Old, though. Very old. Very old. Yeah, yeah interesting. Is that the white of our... Yeah, we're almost back to trailer. camp. Mm -hmm. I just heard on the news yesterday that down in Colorado, I guess they had a really harsh winter and then a really dry uh, spring. And it means that there's not enough food for the bears. So they're saying it's going to be a, a season for bear attacks. They're warning everybody to be really careful because the bears are looking for alternate sources of food. Us. Hey, we're back home. We're gonna go check out that cheesecake. I was curious if that cheesecake was done yet. <laughs> it can be. Oh, let's go check it out. Yeah. I'll go first. <laughs> Watch this. So what mix did you use to make this? Mix? I don't use no stinking mixes. Ooh, I shouldn't have said that. I really <laughs> I forgot you were holding a knife. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, this is a... Takes two our cream cheese um, things, yeah, <laughs> and two eggs, some whipping cream. You can use whole milk if you want. Um, vanilla and sugar and lemon zest. That's it. Yep. Then what? You just then what? How did you cook it in the pressure cooker? Would you tell us? Um, I mean, in the instant pot. Instant, instant pot. pot. Yeah, it's yeah. it's a three quart instant pot. So you have to have a six by three um, spring form pan. And um, I found this one at Walmart. So they do have them six by three. And that's why it's a cute little cheesecake. And I think it, you cook it on high for 27 minutes. Oh, you have to have a strap Oops. made out of uh, foil. You got a piece of foil that will do that and you lower it in on top of a trivet with a cup and one and a half cups of water. So water in the Instapot, on, put that... Uh, and this is not sitting in the water. No, it's sitting above the water. Okay, got it. We'll put the recipe in the dis video description. Exactly. If, it, if it's good. <laughs> I'm sure it's delicious. I've made this before, so... Okay, there's your side, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> this trip is all about homemade, homemade pies and homemade cheesecakes. <laughs> One thing that's been made clear on this trip is that there's homemade and there's homemade. Um, a lot of the restaurants that are claiming homemade pies, it's just they, they put in a, a commercial made, a ready-made pie crust in the pan and they pour cans of uh, pie filling in it and uh, that's homemade pie. Then there's places like the Shade Tree Cafe in Denton, Montana, where it looked to me like it was all homemade. The crust was wonderful, nice and flaky crust. So, yeah, there's that. How's it? Mm. It's good. Mm, it looks good. Let me try. Try another bite here. Came out good, Linda. Thank you. You know, the sun coming through the trees like this just reminded me of one time 
I was hunting pigs in Hawaii and up in the jungle up above uh, uh, Hilo and on the big island. And the sun was coming through the trees like this. And I was walking along, stalking quietly. And I saw this tornado, tornado, a mini tornado lit up perfectly in the sun. And I stopped, I looked at it. You know what it was? It was bees going in and out of a ground hive. And they were, they were like in, a, in approach, you know, they were all circling in and circling back out. Just a thousand bees uh, going in and out of a hole in the ground. Man, those are the kind that if you step on that hole in the ground, they kill you. So I was, I crept very quietly away from that spot. Hey, isn't this a beautiful evening? Okay, I'm going to take off for just a little while. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> yeah, you better come back. Yeah, what are you going to do when I'm gone? I don't know. I'll probably putz around in the woods. Okay, you be careful. Yep. All right, sweetheart. See you in a little bit. All right. Okay. Have fun. section of woods. Now this is the east side of the snowy mountains which are just south of Lewistown, Montana. It was quite a little trip getting in here. Just uh, the road was good. It was just the um, it was a long dirt road. It was like at the minimum you got 25 miles of dirt and we kind of went around about we ended up about 35 miles. Camped out on the prairie in that last video you saw and how peaceful and beautiful that was. That was really nice. But I'm looking for camp spots. Camp spots for me and you. this area. Now what I'm looking for is a campfire ring. Let's walk around and check it out. Well, I don't see a campfire ring. Uh, Linda and I always look at that because it's kind of like nobody can argue with you. You're, you're at a, at a, you're not in a designated campsite, but you're at a place where people have been camping. Well, before I go any further, I want to explain something here. I'm looking for campfire rings to show that a that a campsite has been historically established in that area. People say, well, why not just bring a pile of rocks along and just make your own campfire ring wherever you want? Well, you're allowed to disperse camp within 300 feet of the main road, but at the same time, you're not allowed to make tracks across a meadow if there are, if a, if a road doesn't exist. You can't just drive off the road, in, in other words, and make your own tracks. You can't do that you have to kind of stay in an area that is already, you know, like a pullout or a, an established campsite. So that's why we're looking for campfire rings. What I'm looking for is any sign of a wide open spot or sign that somebody has been driving in just to get off the main road here. Because uh, this being springtime, the, their tire tracks are all overgrown, unless somebody's been in there this year. So I'm just curious, because I've never been here before. Just checking out that spot, see if it was a pull out of any kind.
This is fun. Okay, here we go. Look at this. Oh my goodness. And there's even a railing here to tie your horse up, and I'm not kidding. That's what that is. Check it out. How's this? By the way, this is Saturday. And I'll bet you there's campfire rings over there on the other side. We'll go take a look in a minute. There's the campsite I was telling you about just now. And look right here. Another fire ring. That's what I'm looking for. So there are places where you can get off the road up in here and camp comfortably. And what a view. Also see a big bull elk track right there. <laughs> big boy. Time to take just a minute here for the sponsor of this video, which is Magicycle. And if it wasn't for their generosity, I wouldn't be out here doing this right now. You guys, I'm no good at doing those smooth talking uh, video sponsorship uh, inserts, but I can just tell you like it is. This bike, it gets me around the city perfectly, and it also handles most of the trails. If it wasn't a good product, and if their customer service wasn't top notch, I would not be doing this. This is a great company, and it's a great product. Anyways, you be sure and check out Magicycle. Check the link below. Okay, you can see here, if it gets muddy, this gets impassable. We're supposed to get rain tomorrow. It's probably why too many people don't come up here. This isn't a place to take a big rig. By the way, it is tick season, so <laughs> I start out, I spray my legs and the bottom part of my legs and I spray my boots every morning. That seems to do the trick. Boy, this looks like it would be the perfect place to back into right here, but I don't see a campfire ring here. However, as long as you're close enough to the road, you might be all right. Okay, let's go look further down the road. Oh, here you go. There's a campfire ring right there. What a beautiful location this one is. Well, I think I've satisfied myself uh, that there are places around here um, where a person can camp. So I'll, we'll come back up here. It's kind of far from home, but uh, you know, it's a couple hours drive anyway. What I want to do is go check out another road that I passed coming in here. So we'll go down and check that one out. Yeah, stop for a breather. You know, I mentioned don't bring any big rigs in here. You'd be surprised what these Montana cowboys bring in here. <laughs> You'll see fifth wheelers, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, pretty rough though. North Fork Pole Creek. I just want to go check it out a little bit. Okay, this road would be real sketchy if it got wet. If you were up this road, you'd be waiting for it to dry out before you got out. And it's the kind of road that Linda and I just love. <laughs> That's the truth. That's how we find these beautiful places to camp. There's a broken tent stake. But notice something, other than this broken tent stake, there is no garbage here. Uh, Montana campsites tend to be like that. You've seen the ones I've showed you today and there's pretty much no garbage. Well, I want to go further down the road, just poking around. 
I better turn around pretty soon and go back and see how Linda's doing. But I got this thing where I always got to see what's around the next bend. I'll bet you you guys are like that too or you wouldn't be watching this channel. I just heard an elk. Elk cow. Well, they don't continue to sound off. They only sound off once or twice and they, they, sh they get quiet again because that's just what they do. Okay, you can bet that this is another place to camp here. Very nice, except this tree is down. Hello. Well, now there's just a little light rain on the roof, but Linda and I just went through about an hour of heavy, heavy downpour and lightning all around. I'll let you listen to some audio of that. <laughs> but um, the problem is with that heavy a downpour, we're, we're 35 miles of dirt to get back out of here. And we may be stuck here for a couple days waiting for the roads to dry out. Tomorrow I'll go do a little exploring on the bike, take it out and check the road uh, to see if it's um, a mud a mud bog or not. But I'll bring you along. We'll go take a look at it. Okay, it's been steady rain all night, sometimes driving rain really hard. So what I'm doing is taking the bike out to see. Linda and I were planning on leaving today, but we have enough provisions for another four days or so, or even longer. We've got probably eight gallons of water, which is plenty. And also, I got to go check the road out to see if we could drive out today. So I'm taking the bike to go inspect that. Uh, the um, video is not going to be great because the camera is going to get covered with uh, rainwater. And the audio is going to suck too because the microphone is inside my jacket. <laughs> so let's go check it out. Yeah. See the road here in front of me is just right here at the base of our camp is one of the bad spots. But I, it's pretty rocky so I think I can get through this on the... Oh no, yeah. Oh, super deep mud. Holy moly. Hmm. Okay, that spot is questionable. Then if I can get through that though, I'm all right. What's the road here? Another big mud puddle up here. I don't know. Oh, super muddy. Oh, but kind of solid underneath. here. Hope it's solid in the middle because I'm going through it. Yeah, it was kind of solid at the bottom. I'm not looking forward to going back. <laughs> going through that again. Woo. Yeah, man, what I just came through was really bad. But I think the car would be all right with the four-wheel drive and the KO2s that I got on there. Boy, on a bicycle, it was hazardous. 
You should see the bike right now, it's covered in mud. <laughs> Yeah, it was a muddy ride. Oh my goodness. Hey, Linda. Look how muddy the bike is. Well, listen, here's the deal. Uh, we can go, but it's touch and go going out of here. And there's a couple of really bad spots between here and where we intersect the uh, main road coming in. So we can go. I think we'll be all right with our four-wheel drive and everything. I got to get this bike loaded up, and okay. I'm going to do uh, get the inside ready to go. Because okay. it's just a steady rain, so I'll, I'm already soaking wet on my pant legs and boots and everything. So okay, okay, okay. bye. <laughs> So I guess we're going. Uh, we'll video that on the way out too. That could be a little touch and, touch and go. All right. This is going to be touch and go. That first part right there, getting out of here. Oh right yeah, because it That's was... a bog right there. Oh. So, yep. Okay, so. Here we go. I got it in four wheel low. I determined that if I actually got into the ruts, I'd be down to the rock. But I don't know. We'll just play it by ear here. I'm going to take a little bit of a run at this. Okay. I don't. Things are going to get bounced in the trailer a little bit, but here we go. Okay. Oh boy, that was slick. But we're out. And okay. And the trailer is still with us. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I'll stop up here and take it out of four-wheel low. And we should say our prayer. Oh, gosh, yeah. Well, we were thinking of it before we left, so I'm sure God recognized that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's pray to get out of here now. Yeah. It's all right. Okay. Sure was nice back in there, though, wasn't it? Yeah. It's one of the nicest spots. And you look at this and you go, boy, this is really bad. And then you go, oh, it's just part of the adventure. <laughs> <laughs> and it's true, it's just part of the adventure. Okay, back to the main road here. Yeah, we'll go out the way we came in because we know what the road is like. Yep. <laughs> See, this is not good either. Look at this. Oh, yeah, this is Ooh. dirt. Yeah, this is mud now. Oh, yeah. Thank goodness for four-wheel drive. Okay. Hope there's not too many spots like that. Well, I can see the planes out in front of us. There was still a couple touch-and-go spots back there, though. Just like here. Yeah. Whoa, pay attention you. <laughs> oh, I'm paying attention. Four wheel drive and 15 miles an hour and just slogging through the mud. But you know, this is what it takes to get to the really great campsites. <laughs> Now you people see the backstory. <laughs> backstory of a bad country road. Yep. Isn't it your turn to wash the car? No, it's your turn. Oh, well, we finally made it out. <laughs> what a mess. Well, it was a harrowing trip, but Linda and I made it home. And uh, we couldn't finish this video without one more pie stop. And what we've done is we've come to 2K's Cafe in Great Falls, where we live. Because we're home, we wanted a hometown pie. A hometown homemade pie, so here we are. I got a slice of lemon meringue. 
and Linda's got this huge fat piece of apple pie slightly warmed up. Mm -hmm. It almost tastes like mine. Well, well that's saying a lot. <laughs> Linda makes the best apple pie. I like that sign. I know, one of my customers gave it to me. Because that's exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's exactly. Two cases located in the industrial area of Great Falls, Montana. Their food is all good. They large portions and delicious recipes. It's a working man's restaurant. The gal that runs it, we've known her for years. We love this place. The pie was definitely homemade. If you come to Great Falls, check out 2Ks. Hey guys, if you enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you around.